the opposition leader there in Perth ahead of a shadow cabinet meeting and you get a sense of what we can expect next week when Parliament returns for 2024. Let's bring in my colleague Andrew Clennell now who was watching that news conference as well. Peter Dutton fired up off the back of the broken promise on tax. What can we expect from the shadow cabinet meeting today in the West? Simple answer is not much, Kieran. Uh, you heard it there from the opposition leader. They're going to take their time. They don't want to be rushed on this. They don't have to come up with a position until Parliament next week. And there are, in fact, a couple of shadows who haven't even gone over for the Shadow Cabinet. Nationals leader David Littleproud and his deputy Perrin Davey, for example. So they don't have a full room to discuss it. It's an open opening uh, discussion in relation to this. That extra time, those extra days, of course allow the Liberal Party to do more research in the seat of Dunkley with that crucial by-election looming. Let's not forget that. So he's buying himself a bit of time here, Peter Dutton. He's seeing what the punters of Dunkley think. I think you and I, as betting people, see him delivering the tax cut or, sorry, supporting the tax cut at the lower end but promising bigger tax cuts, similar to Stage 3, for the higher income earners. You don't have to be uh, a political genius to work out that's the most logical position to land on. Exactly. Of course, that would mean he could... Uh, does he vote for the final bill or against it? That's the thing. If he votes against it, even if he's tried to amend yeah. it, Anthony Albanese will keep whacking him with that. So that's kind of the question. But I think the position of the coalition will clearly be uh, more tax cuts uh, or support the tax cuts at the lower end, do more at the higher end. Yep, indeed. It looks uh, like the obvious outcome. We will see uh, either way the drama continues next week here at Parliament. The Teals, for their part, they're divided. Uh, and they're, it's an interesting analysis here because many of these members of Parliament represent some of the wealthiest electorates in the country. They do, but they've got a lot of renters in there who've cop rent increases and want a tax cut as well. So that's the dichotomy, if you like, Kieran. But... The majority of the Teals are going to support it. Doesn't matter in terms of the numbers. The government has the numbers in the House of Representatives where these so-called Teal independents are. But it does matter, potentially, for their electoral prospects. They're up against Liberals who want tax cuts for higher uh, income earners. So these are the ones leaning pro the changes or saying flat out they will support the changes at the moment. Kate Cheney, Monique Ryan, Sophie Scomps, Zoe Daniel, Kylie Tink. And then we have two others who say we oppose these changes. Well, there's a reason for that. I'll show you that in a minute. Allegra Spender and Zali Stegall. Well, Zali Stegall's leaning that way anyway. They're both leaning that way, put it that way. They haven't unequivocally said we're voting against these changes or anything of that nature. Although you can imagine with these Teal independents there'll be some amendments because that's what they tend to do. Now, here are the wealthiest electorates in terms of highest proportion earning over 180000 of course, these are very expensive electorates to live in, which is one of the reasons why you need to be on a decent wicket or have worked your way up to one to, to live there or certainly own property there. Wentworth, Allegra Spender. 15% of people on more than 180. Zali Stegel, 14. Kylie Tink then, interesting, because she's in the same position as the other two. But as you make your way down with Kate Cheney and Kuyong Monique Ryan, you can see there's uh, less pressure there, even less with McKellar, the Northern Beaches. That's a very diverse community in terms of wealth. There are some wealthy people there. This is what Sophie Scomps, a federal member for McKellar, has provided us in a statement today, Sky News. My position was that the government should honour their election commitment to implement the tax cuts, not only for integrity reasons, but also because so many were depending on these cuts to help them through the current cost of living crisis. While the changes the government announced are a deviation from what they promised, which is always troubling, it does respond to the hardship and mortgage stress many families are facing. It is without a doubt a very different environment to when the cuts were first planned five years ago. And she says the cost of living crisis shouldn't be ignored. So, she says, concludes, while trying to uh, give some comfort, I guess, to those in her constituents, uh, constituency who are losing the cuts, Sophie Scomp says, in the current context of so many Australians facing financial hardship, the government's changes to the stage three tax cuts, if I'm honest, we always hope for honesty, Kieran, just feel a lot fairer. That's her position. The majority of the Teal independents will support these changes. Only two outliers at the moment, Kieran. 
And Anthony Albanese, yeah. even uh, when I interviewed him on the weekend uh, and was talking about some of the seats that are in danger for Labor, like Higgins, like McNamara, because of these changes at the top end, Kingsford Smith's another one, he said, well, look, my own seat uh, is in that category. I've got a lot of people in my seat of Grainler more than 180,000. It's interesting, isn't it? Because his seat voted 70% the voice. So he's relying in his seat, apart from the fact he's up against the Greens who want to go further left on the policy, but he's also relying on people basically wanting to hand their money over. And it sounds like he's getting some support in that respect. There are a lot of high-income earners who voted for you in certain seats in particular, Higgins, those sort of seats, Tangney. There are FIFO workers who earn... 180, 200 for their household who, who voted for you, and they're getting four and a half grand less. So there, that's there, the there's, a, there's a few in there's a few in Grainler as well. There, there are many uh, in Grainler. Andrew, there are and, many and, in Grainler. And you know, you know what you know what they've said to me. They've said to me as we've gone around. They understand that so many people are under financial pressure, and those people. So they're prepared to give up those four and people. Half grand a year. Well, those people will get. I will get, Andrew, and you will get. On your salary, four and a half thousand dollars. Four and a half thousand dollars. So, just to confirm, no final decision expected at Shadow Cabinet on the Coalition's position on tax cuts. In fact, it's being presented, as I understand it, as a discussion paper, quote unquote, which indicates there'll be no decision today, Karen.